What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I have another tag video for you and we're gonna pot up some flower seedlings while I answer some questions. So Julia, AKA the plant goblin, tagged me in her plant tube tag. She has had the balls, the audacity, to be a new plant tuber and make up a plant tag and frankly, I love that. So Julia tagged me in her video and I am happy to answer her 10 questions about plants. Uh, we're going to talk about my favorite genus, genuses I don't love, things that I bought thinking I'd like them and then didn't. And while we do it, we're going to pot up some of these seedlings, which should have been potted up, uh, you know, weeks ago. Okay, good. I have a Tom Thumb lettuce over here. And then this one over here is a butter crunch. So uh, these guys need to go out into my garden bed, but I, it's just not quite ready yet. I need about a three, four more days. So I'm just gonna move these over into some cups. And um, in the seven to 10 days, I'm sure it will take me to wait three to four days. Um, I'm sure that they'll be fine for transplanting. So I've also got um, a one single sweet pea here that needs to be transplanted as well as some very well chewed down catnip because of someone. <laughs> See, a lot of these seedlings are leaning and that's because I am running out of space under my grow lights. So I need to start transitioning more things outside under cover. And uh, that's a big reason why we're gonna move these lettuce out of this tray. Okay. So question number one is what is my favorite genus? And right now, and for quite some time now, I would say it is definitely philodendron. Um, I love philodendrons. I do have a very deep love for both Peperomia and Hoya. They sort of maintain my second and third place positions uh, changing a lot. Currently, I would say Hoya is in number two, uh, but yeah, those are definitely my favorites. As usual, I have my a slightly pre-moistened Green Tree Pro Mix. This is a cocoa and perlite mix, and um, it works really well for me. I use it my house plants as well as just getting seeds, um, you know, started and potted and stuff like that. Outside, I would use probably something else, but right now, this is my favorite indoor soil. It is a little bit difficult to get if you don't have like a local grow store. Um, I don't think that they have it on Amazon. I have looked, but I don't see it. I, I found it once and it was really overpriced, so I didn't really want to link it. Um, but I do usually keep a product link down in the description box, not an affiliate link or anything. It's just literally a link to the website, um, just so you can see what the, what the product looks like. Try to find it on your own. It's really good, but any kind of, you know, um, cocoa, I try to stay away from peat moss as much as I can. I haven't, you know, eliminated it as much as I would like to. Um, we're, we're working on it, but right now it's the most inexpensive thing, you know, to fill garden beds in my area with the soil we have and stuff. So I've been looking into different alternatives for filling my raised beds so that I don't have to consume a lot of that or any of that um, very non-renewable resource. If you don't know anything about that, um, give it a little Google. It's, it's interesting. So right now I'm just using um, a lot of plastic cups that I'm cutting little holes on either side of the cup out of just for my potting. Um, you can use these a million times and the thinner pots that I was getting at the Dollar Tree are fine too, but I've noticed that those break a lot easier than just these plastic cups. So if I'm going to be using plastic, I'm just going to reuse the drinking cups, you know, that we get at parties and stuff. and seems a little bit better than uh, using the plastic pots that I just end up throwing out because they totally end up breaking. My messy bun's getting unnecessarily messy right now. Thank you. And as I just kind of cut a little bit of the corner, ugh, geez, you also want to use the squint goggles um, while you're doing this or you're going to put your eye out. Uh, <laughs> so this guy has um, already been hardened off quite a bit, so it's going to end up going outside in the greenhouse with the other sweet peas. They really like cool temperatures. Okay, let's get back to the questions. So question number two is my least favorite genus. And um, I've said this before, and I know it's a bit of an unpopular opinion. Um, I'm not really into syngoniums. I have one, I have the velvet leaf one, and I, I really like that one. Um, but generally like the pink splashy ones and stuff like that, um, I don't like dislike them. I just, they just don't really do anything for me. And then um, you know, African violets, like 
Disney area. It's just not, it's not my thing. And I probably said that wrong, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, I, I, they, those have not called to me yet. So I would say those are probably my least favorite. Ficus and I don't get along very well either, but we'll get to that. So number three is a plant genus that intimidates me. Um, I would have to say that that's probably ficus. I don't really want a lot of ficus in my house. Um, they, they just, they get spider mites. No matter what I do, um, I think my air, I don't know if my sun is too hard. I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is about ficus and I, but um, those are what originally brought spider mites into my house. And I feel like I will never fully get rid of them because of the ficus that I had in my house. Um, yeah, so ficus and I don't super get along. I got these lettuce seeds from Fedco Seeds, which are absolutely just lovely, just ethically and in general. And their seeds so far have had between like an 80 and 100% germination rate for me, which is outstanding. I don't fill these cups all the way to the top. Um, I'm trying to not go too crazy on the dirt because these will be transplanted very soon. You can put lettuce out very early. I could have had this out in the yard probably two weeks ago, but you know, <laughs> the world decided to end. So, you know, and that's a joke before anybody, you know, comes and gives me unsolicited advice about how to feel about this current situation, you know. YouTube does this thing where it gives you um, a whole bunch of aunties and grandmas that you never really wanted. <laughs> Usually a nice thing, but not always, you know. Just saying, I'm a full grown adult, all right. If you were a house plant, what would you be? Hmm. That is a good question. I think that I would be one of my baby cactus seedlings, you know, because I'm cute, but I'll can stab you. Next question. So question number five is, is there ever a house plant that I disliked, that I thought I would like purchased, owned, and ended up disliking? <sighs> yes, probably several. <laughs> first and foremost and the most disappointing to me and it's it's my fault it's my fault it's something i'm doing i'm sure of it um you know so this is and, and this is not to say that i don't love these plants um i do which is why i continue to try to understand what they want from me and that is my monstera assholei i mean adonsonii this thing is just always going through something you know it's just like i'll look at it and i'll be like oh my gosh look it's growing a bunch of leaves it loves me i must be doing something right and then i'll wake up the next day and like a whole bunch of those leaves will have fallen off or turned brown and i'm like what so as you can see these are these need to go in the garden these shouldn't even be going in cups but we're basically just gonna buy ourselves a couple of days with this so I am in the process of trying to figure out what my Monstera assholey eye wants from me. I think that it probably could use a little bit more humidity. Um, I, I think that perhaps it needed to be fed, which I have done, and I am seeing a little bit of improvement in it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it seems like it's just never really happy. And I know that for a lot of people, this is also the case. So I know that it's not just me, um, but People have them and they look lovely. So I know it's possible. Now I should say this is mostly the wide leaf one I'm struggling with. I was struggling with the narrow leaf one as well, but I cut it into three parts and replanted it and those are doing great. So I think it just had a really rough transition coming from like Florida to here. Um, and, and it just needed a, it just needed a do over. In its defense, I did sort of leave it for dead in the bathroom after a while. I got so aggravated with it. <laughs> like, you know what? Be a jerk. And I just left it in the bathtub for quite some time. Quite some time. It's possible it had some kind of pest, but I could never really find anything on it. And it seems fine now, so I, I don't know. Favorite method of propagation. I would definitely have to say that that would be my little moss globes or just moss in general. I love propagating in sphagnum moss. Um, I, for some reason, propagating in water, um, the transition period is so rough for me when it goes from water into dirt and I have like a less hard time 
um, with the sphagnum to dirt. So I don't know if maybe that's why I prefer it that way or if it's just more fun to stuff things full of sphagnum moss and then grow things that way, but I really do enjoy moss propagation. Question number seven is, what are your favorite plant things to do? Um, honestly, what I'm doing right now is definitely one of my favorite things to do. While it takes me a long time to get around to it, it's not because I don't like to do it, it's just because like it's hard for me to set everything up and have time to do it. So usually I really love just sitting and like moving things from pot to pot, just like up potting things and then just having that like leisurely afternoon to just waltz around, you know, you're in your like jammies like all day and you can just like pet your leaves and clean things and just take care of chores. That feeling after you get a bunch of plant chores done that you've been putting off for a while, oh, I chase that feeling. Question number eight is, have you ever gone overboard purchasing plants? <laughs> <laughs> Question number nine. Have you ever been pressured by social media popularity? That is a good question. I don't know if I would say I have been pressured. I would say that I have gained appreciation for certain plants that I have seen enough times. <laughs> Like maybe at first they didn't really grab me, but then, you know, I would see all these posts and, you know, there's plants in, in cool pots and, and things like that. Like there's definitely a lot of plants that didn't initially call to me that I would say definitely do now. And I'm, I'm sure that some of that has to do with social media and just good presentation and even just like the testimonies of a plant fan, you know, like somebody can really make you appreciate something that you didn't maybe initially appreciate until, I don't know, you saw someone else do it. I also think when I first started collecting plants that that's how I ended up with the cursed fiddle leaf fig. And I found this fiddle leaf fig at the grocery store down the street. And I had heard so much about the fiddle leaf fig, you know, two years ago, that was like everything. You had to have a fiddle leaf fig. And I saw one and it was in terrible condition. And I knew it was in terrible condition, but I thought, oh my gosh, it's like a pretty big fiddle leaf fig. And it's only, you know, at the time, I think it was on clearance for like $11 or something. And I was like, I, ha I have to have it. I have to have it, right? And I know that I thought in that moment, like, oh, wait till I tell social media, I got this sucker for $11. And you know what? That sucker came with um, $11 and then some worth of spider mites that I never did get rid of, ever. I, I would say that they probably still live here because of that damn plant. <laughs> and you know, it wasn't a super attractive plant. Like, I like fiddle leaf figs, but this particular one, wasn't it really wasn't all that and uh yeah i really really effed my life up uh because i thought who would turn down a fiddle leaf fig for eleven dollars all right one more question two more lettuce plugs what is a plant you own that you feel like should get more spotlight on social media Great question. Um, that for me is definitely my Sissus adenipoda. Now this baby, I, I only know of one other person who has one and that is Summer Rain Oaks. I'm pretty sure that other people own them. I just don't personally know any. So um, that one was definitely on the verge of being dead as of a few weeks ago. And it looks fabulous right now. In fact, it's climbing up my philodendron no matter how many times I unhinge it, but I haven't found the proper trellis for her yet. So, you know, until that happens, I think she's gonna keep deciding where she climbs. Um, so I'm definitely gonna have to get on that this week. You know, <laughs> it's not like I have anywhere to be, right? But yeah, I don't see that plant ever really talked about. And to the point where I really can't find a lot of care information for it, you know, you can just go based on other sissus, obviously, um, that'll work. But you know, sometimes it's nice to just get advice on a genus from somebody who owns the specific variety that you have. So yeah, if I ever get Summer Rain Oak's ear in a few minutes again, I may have to pick her brain on this one. So I've potted up a bunch of these little lettuce babies. I have another tray or two left to go. So I'm gonna definitely continue on doing that. But 
that's the end of the question. If you want to participate in the tag, I will leave the original video down below. You can go say hi to Julia, let her know that I sent you over there and uh, definitely subscribe because she's really close to 100 and I would love to see her go over that. It's a, it's a fun milestone to go over when you're first starting out on YouTube. It means a lot. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and up potting these seeds. And I will see you very soon in the next one because because it's just isolation week is just going to keep going. Okay, bye.